today we are going to discuss the concept of intentionality. As I mentioned in the last class that intentionality is an intrinsic property of consciousness. Now, according to Searle intentionality and consciousness are identical they are necessarily related consciousness being produced by brain processes shows that intentionality says a kind of a causal relationship with brain processes. I am trying to cite this causal notion of intentionality precisely because there is already a theory of intentionality advocated by Edmund Husserl. According to Husserl intentionality is also the necessary property of consciousness, but Husserl does not hold the causal theory of intentionality as it has been understood by Searle. Now, John Searle's biological naturalism remains sympathetic to the naturalistic tradition that is there is a scientific understanding of consciousness possible, meaning thereby everything is based on the ontological status of the matter. Intentionality has a material grounding whether it is biological or physical intentionality has this material grounding because as you know Searle's biological naturalism is based on two presuppositions that is the atomic theory of matter and the evolutionary biology. So, intentionality does not disown these presuppositions. In other words, Searle's theory of intentionality is a causal theory of intentionality because it does not disown its causal root. Now, Husserl on the other hand tries to talk about a transcendental theory of consciousness, where Husserl tries to figure out intentionality is a logical feature of consciousness. Consciousness is intentionally related with the world. So, Husserl's theorization of intentionality is different from the Searlian theorization of intentionality. For Husserl, intentionality is a non-physical phenomenon. It is a non-physical feature of consciousness, whereas for Searl, it is a physical feature of consciousness. We would discuss about Husserl's intentionality a bit when we uh, give a transcendental notion of consciousness, how consciousness is a transcendental phenomenon maybe in some other class. Today, we would try to analyze what is Searle's notion of intentionality. Now, intentionality as you know that it has this feature of directedness, aboutness. So, whenever we talk about and mental states or intentional states, they are necessarily about the world or about the object or a state of affairs. Now, for Searle sure, desire, belief and intentions are the mental states as you see belief, desire and intentions are the mental states which are directed about the world whenever I say that I have the desire, then I try to say that I desire something. Now, I give an example and try to illustrate this notion of intentionality. Think of a case for intentionality is a part of the very experience of desire, belief and intention. Now, I cite this case of Rohan could be anybody else, but if Rohan is a person okay, human being, Rohan desires to have a high profile job 
Okay. Rohan believes that high profile jobs are available in the market. There is there are jobs available in the world and he intends to work hard to get the job. Rohan's desire will be fulfilled if and only if he works hard and secures good grade in the final examination. So, think of the case x, x being the person, x has desire, belief, intention. Now, x desires something. So, this very expression of desire is to talk about how a particular mental state like desire is directed to the world, because jobs are available in the world. So, this directedness or what shall call the aboutness is an intentional feature of the mind. Now, Sal makes a distinction between intention and intentionality. Intentionality is always a feature, whereas intention is a mental state. All mental states will have this feature of intentionality. What is important to understand here is this that how these mental states explain our actions, because the mental states are about the mind as I mentioned in the last class that these mental states constitute the network, these mental states constitute the network and the network represents the mind. So, there is something internal about the mental states, but when Sal talks about the internality of mental states, Sal also tries to show that these mental states are expressed in the form of language, in the form of language. So, the expression of mental states in the form of language shows that they are directed about the world. They also show that they represent the world. Say for example, how Rohan perceives the notion of a job in the market, speaks about Rohan's experience of the social phenomena. So, if that is the case, how does an individual experiences things and how does he or she represents them. So, that will bring the concept of intentionality in a more explicit manner. And it will also show that this idea of a fulfillment or the satisfaction will talk about how things are also associated with mind. It is not intentionality, it is not about the external conditions or external relations, but also something internal to the mind. And that is what is you now we are trying to explain and Sal very well explains this that there is some kind of a direction of fit between the individual, the subject who is a conscious being and the world. So, that kind of relationship we will talk about. Now, what is directedness? Look at, let us extend this example little further. If the teacher says that Rohan is doing well in the class and Rohan hears this statement of teachers, Rohan is happy about his performance in the class and in the examinations. Then Rohan of course, feels happy. Now, the question is whether this happiness or the feeling of happiness is intentional. Do they represent like the desires, belief, intention? Now, I am intending to do certain action. 
intending to perform certain action, I am intending to work, Rohan intended to work, Rohan is working for the examination, is an intentional action and Sal calls it intention in action. When Rohan experiences this fact that he has been working hard, when Rohan experiences this fact that there are good quality job available in the market. Now, this is very experience of certain things. Sal so, says that look at how intention works, that is what is called intention in action. The very fact that Rohan gets good grade at a high profile job gives them some kind of satisfaction. So, the experience of satisfaction, the experience of this is something internal to Rohan or any person called Rohan that is something internal to him. We need to understand little further that further what kind of directedness the notion of feeling will have. Does Searle say that feeling is directed about certain things? Does Searle point out this fact that feeling is feeling represents something? It is also true in the case of desire and intention that they represent things. Whenever I say I desire a glass of water or I would like to have a glass of water, the desire represents something that I am thirsty or I am experiencing thrust something like that. Now, the question is whether feeling also expresses or represents this something. According to Searle, there are mental states which are unintentional, they do not represent things. So, for example, my sudden feeling of happiness, elation and fear, fear and elation are some kind of mental experiences, but they do not really represent things certain cases of uh, say Rohan did not get a job. Think of a situation where Rohan did not get a job, then there is a possibility that Rohan may get depressed, because he was anxious of getting a job. So, anxiety, depression are non representational mental states, they do not represent anything, meaning thereby they are not directed towards any object. I am anxious of certain things, it is difficult to say that what I am anxious of. So, in the depression the person is not really know what is the cause of depression. So, therefore, for Searle the feeling of depression and anxious anxiety are not directed, they are the evidence of undirected mental states. So, there are mental states which are directed about the world and there are mental states which are not directed about the world. So, for example, I am feeling very nervous, I am or I am feeling kind of a fear being in this room but I do not know what is the cause of my fear. So, in that situation things are non intentional in character, there are feelings, but feelings are non intentional, they do not represent things. Then we need to understand what is the nature of representation in Searle's theory of 
intentionality. Intending and intention are just one form of intentionality. Now, we need to look at what is Searle's notion of representation. As I said that mental states are intentional states and all intentional states are representational, because they represent an object or state of affairs in the world. Intentional states are representational states. When I say that, I must also point out a little bit on this that how thoughts or mental states are representational. This is network of mental states that Sal is talking about refers to thoughts, thoughts are mental. Now, if thoughts are mental phenomena, then how thoughts cause action. According to Searle, thought and actions are intentionally related. There is some kind of a causal intentionality operating in this. Searle says that intending to act or the intention are just one form of intentionality. As I mentioned that there is a kind of a intention in action. Now, this intention in action tries to show that there is some kind of a causal chain. Intention which is causing action. Now, if intention causes action and this entire experience is linked by intentionality and Sal calls it intention in actions. Now, they are just one form of intentionality, they are not two different kinds of intentionality. Intentionality of thought and intentionality of action or the performance of my action are not two different kinds of intentionality, they are one kind of intentionality. Now, therefore, intending is an intentional act, it is an intentional act. So, all voluntary action according to Sal are intentional actions. Desiring is a mental act, intending is a mental act, thinking is a mental act, because whenever I think, I think of something that would show what is mental and what is non-mental. So, intentionality is the marker of the mental, there one can see the similarity between Searle and Brentano. Brentano also says that intentionality is the specific feature of the non-physical or the mental. So, so, mental and physical distinction is created by intentionality and Searle also uses this as a marker of the mental phenomena. When I say that an individual performs and a conscious being performs a person performs an action, then this action is an intentional expression of certain things. So, look at these expressions, intentional expressions. In the case of a sorry, this is wrongly typed, it should be baby daughter. If I say our baby daughter often cries for food and Lado, my friend's pet keeps waiting till my friend arrives. Now, they are two different conscious beings, one is the human and another is non human. For Searl, the non human expressions are also intentional, because the non human is also a living being. So, being a biological source that they express intentionality. So, animals, plants etcetera as I mentioned in the previous class that they are all have this capacity to express intentional actions. But when it comes to human beings, when it comes to human life, then human life is expressed in a different way, because human being use language in a typical way. Probably, it is through humans, being language 
or a linguistic form of life, we are able to understand the other forms of life. But for Searle, human linguistic activities are formed, are structured and can be explained with the help of intentionality. So, meaning according to Searle can be explained through intentionality. So, uh, meaning is very much part of the social linguistic activities of human beings. When I say that meaning can be explained through intentionality, one has to look at this point of Searle that intentionality is a primary condition for language use. Language is secondary because meaning is derived from intentionality, meaning is not derived from language use or the form of life in the way Wittgenstein puts it. So, Searle has a different concern here. We need to look at this in a more explicit manner. So, this idea of meaning derived from intentionality has to be seen explicitly and we will do that in one of the classes when I would be speaking about language world relationship. But, but today let us look at briefly how does Searle explain the intentionality that is involved in language use. As you all know Searle has this hypothesis in 70s when he wrote speech acts. Of course, speech act was published in 1969 by Cambridge University Pace. Now, in speech act Searle comes out with a, this hypothesis that philosophy of action is a branch of philosophy of language. When he says this, he makes it a point that is whenever I express something, I perform a linguistic action. So, expressions linguistic expressions are nothing but actions, one kind of actions, but in later period when he wrote intentionality in 83, he comes out with another hypothesis that is philosophy of language is a part of or a branch of philosophy of mind. So, all the linguistic activities that human beings perform flows from human intentionality. So, intentionality is therefore, primary and intentionality has the defining power, defining power in the sense that it explains human actions, human linguistic behaviors, particularly meaning. So, in this sense, Sal tries to give primacy to the intentional rather than the linguistic. For Sir, intentionality is not linguistic. Why intentionality is not linguistic? I will come back to these questions. One can critique Sal's position, but what is important here look at how does Sal articulate the notion of intentionality is a part of linguistic expressions. Now, when Searle says that speech is an expression, Searle says that we talk about P, P is a proposition and P has a kind of a force embedded in it and Searle calls it illocutionary force. In speech act, Austin defines that there are three stages. One is the locutionary stage, illocutionary stage and the perlocutionary stage. So, for the linguistic expressions are concerned. So, the illocutionary force is involved in the propositions or in the 
expression or the statement. So, whenever I say something say p, then p also carries some kind of a force. For example, if I say close the door is an expression of a command close the door, but if I say please close the door may be used in the sense of a request. So, command request are carrying some kind of a force and Austin calls them performative utterances. Sal calls them speech acts. There is no difference between Sal and Austin here, because when Austin says by saying that please close the door, I am performing an action. I am trying to say this with a particular force and Sal calls it an elocutionary force. This elocutionary force will act in such a way that it will force the hearer to act in a particular way, meaning thereby the hearer would follow what is said and then he would perform what is desired. So, speech act is like performative act. Now, all performative acts have a content, because when I say please close the door, this statement has a content. It expresses a meaning and the hearer understands that meaning and reacts to the statement made by the speaker. So, there is a representational content involved in the representational state expressed by the speaker. Sal says this representational state will have a direction of feet. Now, what is this direction of feet? As I mentioned to you earlier that if x expresses p, p is a statement to the hearer, then the hearer listens to that statement and again reacts. If I say please close the door, then the hearer listen to the statement made by me and closes the door. So, when I say please close the door, I have this hope or there is some kind of a expectation that the hearer will follow. Now, when hearer does something, meaning thereby when hearer closes the door, then this intentionality is from intentionality towards the speaker. So, there are two kinds of intentionality operating here. One, the speaker when says something, intentionality is from mind to the world, when the hearer is saying something, then it is coming from world to the mind and that is what is called direction of fit. So, in the case of speech act, when the speaker performs certain action and his desire is fulfilled, then the direction of fit is achieved. And Sal points out that every statement is expressed with a psychological mode. It is not that just representative content, but there is a psychological mode involved in it. So, P m stands for the psychological mode, R c for the representational content. So, when the representational content and psychological mode are involved in expressing a speech act, what is achieved is some kind of a condition of satisfaction, because I am satisfied in the sense that what I was expecting is also fulfilled. So, why 
say something and I expect certain things. I say that please close the door, but I also desire that the hearer would follow, but I say it. But if the hearer does not follow it, does not obey, then I will express dissatisfaction. Speaker's expression of dissatisfaction is something which is essential for understanding meaning. Because Searle says, in the case of speech act, the sincerity condition is violated. Because whenever a request is made, it is made with an authority and the hearer would follow what the speaker says. If the hearer does not listen to what is said and expected by the speaker, then there is a breach of what kind of a linguistic activities. There is no direction of it. What is there is a kind of a dissatisfaction, because it violates the principle of condition of satisfaction according to Searle. Now, as I mentioned earlier that the condition of satisfaction will talk about some kind of internality that every elocutionary action and the sincerity condition will talk about some kind of in internality that they it is me who is satisfied, it is my mind which is getting satisfied or a particular desire which is getting satisfied. So, desire is not available there, desire is very much part of my mental states, it is associated with other mental states, it is part of my mind. So, in, the, in that sense, Searle would try to show how mind and meaning are related, they are not to separate things, they are in fact related to each other. And this relationship can be explicated through intentionality. So, intentionality not only explains the meaning embedded in our linguistic activities, but also ex explains our experiences, the structure of experiences, because it tries to explicate the structure of representational states or intentional states, how intentional states has a content and how this content brings satisfaction. So, all that. So, whenever Sal will talk about intentionality, Sal will talk about experience of the content of mental states and Sal will also suggest that this intentionality, the human intentionality is self referential, is self reflexive and that is what is shown when he talks about direction of fit. When I am seeing a particular object, he says in the case of perception, this self referentiality is explicit. When I say I am seeing the roads, The fact that I am seeing the rose, I am experiencing the beauty that the rose has. Now, this experience is not only showing a kind of intentionality connecting the subject to the object, but also experiencing the object in me, but thereby Sal does not say that the content is an object, the content can be symbolized, can have a syntactic representation in my thought. So, Searle differs very strongly from the other representationalists who argue that intentionality is causally produced by certain mechanical function of the brain. Now, according to them, particularly the cognitive science and artificial intelligence theory of mind would try to show that there is a syntactic representation where 
content can be computed. Now, look, I would try to locate this quotation and please pay the attention to this that I am mostly emphatically not saying that a belief is a kind of a picture, not I am endorsing Tractatus account of meaning, nor I am saying that belief represents something, is something very important to look at. The Tractatarian account of meaning suggests a representational theory of a meaning. Wittgenstein says that language represents the world. Propositions are the pictures of the world. So, propositions have pictorial element in it. Thoughts are expressed in propositions. So, thoughts would also have the pictoriality in them. So, Searle is not accepting the tractatarian notion of representation. Searle is also not endorsing the notion of representation which has been argued by the cognitive scientist and people who are trying to study human mind from through artificial intelligence, because look at their notion of representations. Belief is a representational state and belief can be syntactically computed, we will have a symbolic representation. But Searle does not believe that. According to Searle, the content that is experienced by the subject is not to be characterized as an object. Content is not an object of thought, rather content is just experienced. Whenever I am perceiving certain things or seeing certain things or acting on certain things so or saying certain things in the case of meaning action perception intentionality is acting in the mode of intention and action so therefore the content is being experienced by the subject but content is an, not an object of our observation or experience so there is no syntactic representation of content possible according to sir. So, therefore, he strongly differs from the rep other representationalist, particularly the cognitive scientist and to some extent he differs from Wittgensteinian notion of representation. So, in, in that sense, so the kind of theory of meaning he is advocating will be something very unique. We will study them in some other class, but let us look at what is Searlian notion of representation. Searlian notion of representation is not syntactical. The syntax in the computational process is observer relative. I am sure Professor Nath will explain when he will talk about Searle's distinction between strong AI and weak AI. Searle puts it very emphatically that computers cannot think. Now, this sounds very typical of Searle. When Searle says the computers cannot think, what he means by this that computers do not have first order intentionality. The kind of intentionality which has been produced by the machines or the computers, the kind of intelligence which is shown by cognitive machines which has this cognitive power are second order intentionality. Biological intentionality is the first order intentionality. All biological beings, living beings will have first order intentionality, because their intentionality is something intrinsic to their consciousness. It is something intrinsic to their life. Whereas, Machine intentionality is a derived notion of intentionality, because whatever is being there, whatever is being programmed are the representational states ascribed to certain machines. So, therefore, they are all derived intentionality, they will all have second order intentionality. 
and Sal also points out that an artificial system will not have life, the kind of consciousness we have, computer will not have. So, to understand what is consciousness, we need to understand what is the concept of consciousness and what kind of form of life human beings live. A computer does not fall in love, human beings fall in love. So, falling in love is, is a kind of an experience which Sal will associate very strongly with human life, the human form of life, whereas in the case of computer that is absent. So, there could be several other examples, other forms of life which human beings have, computer does not smile like human beings smile. Human beings smile is a meaningful one, they represent a meaning, they send a message to us. So, in that sense there are enormous attributes of human consciousness. Now, we will need to look at them and try to show how computers cannot have intentionality. Now, cell mental representation MR are related to feelings, experience and understanding. So, when I say something, I understand this fact that what is being said or in other words, when I say something, I mean whatever is said. So, meaning presupposes understanding. In that sense, the content is revealed in different modes of intentionality. Uh, as I mentioned earlier that the perception, seeing, experiencing, believing, hoping etcetera are different kinds of experiences or different kind of expression of human intentionality in which the content of representational state is experienced. Understanding, imagination are higher order conscious features or the feature of human intentionality. Because in animals do not understand the way human beings understand. Animals lacks this power of imagination. As I mentioned that intentionality has self referentiality, intentionality with the help of its self referential feature tries to show that it is me who is acting. The sense of identity is produced by this self referential feature of intentionality, because the subject understands this fact that he is acting or she is acting, she is doing this, she is experiencing the object. So, the action is associated with the subject, which is very necessary when one talks about the concept like moral responsibility. Animals do not have the sense of moral responsibility and what Sal calls the deontic power of intentionality. So, human intentionality is deontic, has a sense of right or wrong. Human beings have the aesthetic imaginations, they are engaged with creating new things, art, poetry are the manifestation of human imagination, aesthetic imagination. So, in that sense human in intentionality is a very profound notion of intentionality and is different from the machine intentionality, the intentionality of an artificial system. It is the human intentionality shows how we are interacting with the world, how we are intentionally involved in the world. So, the performance of action, perception, meaning etcetera will project 
the significance of human intentionality. So, with this I would like to conclude the lecture setting that Searle's theory of intentionality would explain how intentionality is, is an intrinsic feature of consciousness. Searle's theory of intentionality will also suggest that it is different from the Husserlian theory of intentionality, because Searle gives a causal account of intentionality and Husserl gives a transcendental notion of intentionality, a phenomenological account of intentionality. When Searle says intentionality is intrinsic to human mind, it is intrinsic because it is irreducible, it is not causally explained by certain function of the brain processes or it cannot be causally produced by certain mechanical function of a machine. So, human intentionality is different and to talk about human intentionality we need to locate the entire form of human life, the profoundity of human life, then only we will understand what is consciousness and how consciousness is intentional. Thank you.